Okay, we're back. We're live. It's the 4 o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, our flagship energy show here on Wednesday afternoons. And uh, we have an arrangement by which our host, uh, Mitch Ewan, joins us from the university um, by VMIX call. And we have our guest, Mike Mark Markridge, who is the president of uh, Re Rebuild Hawaii, which is a, a nonprofit that rebuilds things and and um, one of them is a hydrogen project. Okay, we're gonna to talk today about the hydrogen festival, okay, which is coming soon, which you need to know about, and which Mar uh, Mike can tell you about. And Mitch, I'm gonna turn it over to Mitch because he's the true host of this show. Hi, Mitch. Aloha, y'all. This is really cool. <laughs> Yeah, I got caught in a really vicious thunderstorm. I guess you don't want to hear about that, but I just there's no way I could make it down in the studio. So uh, Think Tech Hawaii worked their magic, and I'm talking to you from my uh, very busy office studio that I have here. Oh, Aloha, and Mike, uh, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to uh, come out and be our guest today. And we're going to talk about this 2019 Hydrogen Festival, I think, if this is number one. It's going to be the first one we've had here in Hawaii. So, Mike, uh, why don't you uh, give us a quick little background of uh, what your background is and uh, how you came about, um, you know, uh, putting this whole project together. So, I started working as an economist uh, about 20 years ago, and I started doing papers on different things in Hawaii and. Uh, I'm looking straight ahead now. So one of the things that came about again and again was the cost of energy. And over time, uh, I found out about hydrogen. And it, it occurred to me that one of the things we needed to do was educate people about the importance of hydrogen and why we need to include hydrogen in our, in our lives and hydrogen as a fuel and uh, how this is something for the future. And so we came to the idea that maybe we should have a festival. You know, this is a scientific thing, and normally when you, you talk about fuels, you talk about energy, you're talking about uh, a lot of people sitting around panels and uh, holding conversations about very weighty issues. But uh, oftentimes, it takes a long time to go beyond that, and we wanted to do something what, which could, was more aspirational and which would capture the public's imagination, which could involve uh, school children, the Department of Education, different aspects of uh, Hawaiian society. And that's the idea for the Hawaii Hydrogen Festival, which is scheduled for August 16th uh, this year. And we want to have all the major players uh, who are doing hydrogen, hydrogen vehicles, uh, people who are cooking with hydrogen, people who are using hydrogen for, uh, to create power, and uh, people in Hawaii and people on the mainland and uh, people in Japan and South Korea and in Europe where uh, hydrogen is part of, much more part of the conversation than it is with many people today in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the idea, it's a hydrogen festival. Yeah. Well, it's great that you're taking this initiative, Mike. Uh, you know, uh, we in the uh, kind of academic and engineering community forget about the general public and we just naturally assume they know everything about hydrogen and where the industry is. But in reality, unless we like get out and, and show, uh, show the flag, as we used to say in the Navy, um, they're, they're not going to know what's going on. So, for example, everybody thinks that hydrogen is like 10 years down the road. Well, the news is that hydrogen has arrived, hydrogen vehicles have arrived, and they've actually arrived in Honolulu and in Hawaii um, in the form of uh, the Mirai, the Toyota Mirai, which Servco uh, stepped up to the plate. I mean, hats off to Servco. Um, they took their initiative. Uh, they went to corporate. They got agreement to uh, uh, currently lease uh, the Mirai vehicle here in uh, Honolulu. And out of their own pocket, no government money, no grants, no nothing. I mean, they just dug into their hip pocket 
and put together the funding required, and they built the first public hydrogen fueling station in Hawaii. By public, I mean that they've even offered that anybody who has a hydrogen car can come and fill up at their station out in the Puna Puna. And, uh, I mean, what what leadership is that and, and vision and, and, and going forward? So now they have uh, the uh, Toyota Mirai available for lease. And uh, I don't want to quote what the lease rates are, but from my point of view, uh, they seem to be very attractive. And they do include, like, a th three-year supply of hydrogen. And all the operation and maintenance costs are free, as I understand it. I'm qualified at so uh, it's a really good deal, and so essentially, hydrogen and hydrogen vehicles are now here in Hawaii. We have other projects, of course. I mean, Stan Osterman and uh, HCAT have been working on hydrogen for at least uh, 15 or longer than that, 20 years, uh, with the U U.S. Air Force, uh, uh, Hickam Air Force Base. And we also have a hydrogen station that HEI has uh, put up at uh, the Kaneohe Marine Corps Base. Um, Unfortunately, those stations are not accessible by the general public because they are on, you know, military bases. So it's very difficult to be able for, you know, a member of the public to come in and fuel it. And they're frankly not set up to be a traditional fueling station. Like, they don't have a point of sale. I mean, you can't swipe a credit card or whatever to uh, fill your vehicle. So I've been doing a lot of talking. So uh, let me go back to our guest. He's supposed to be doing all the talking. And ask him a little bit more, uh, put him on the spot. Um, we had a discussion at lunch today, so a little bit more of what the plans are, uh, how he envisions this all coming together. So, Mike, um, let me throw that out to you, and I'll fill in the blanks. So okay. go ahead. Okay, well, uh, the way this came about was I, was I was doing research on early motor cars in Hawaii, and you can kind of think, you know, what, what does this have to do with, with hydrogen? But, you know, around the turn of the century, you know, Hawaii was always well, kind good of... Good news. We have your photographs. We can show. Oh, okay. We, you yeah, want to put some let's of those on? Yeah, let's put so them on. People don't realize that the motor car goes back to 1765, you know, we, and, but it, it, this is a little later. Can you, can you flip that on the side so we can see that's... Okay. Yeah, that maybe... Uh, okay, wait. We're going to, we got to turn it the right way. Right. Anyway, so, so anyway, okay, so so people were saying, oh, well, hydrogen is taking a long time to come along. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but I became very interested because how fast the motor car, once it started, once people got really involved, and once they became interested, once it became really important, uh, the motor car just kind of took off. And at first, when, when people were uh, coming up with all these different kinds of motor cars, I think, you know, there, there were like more than a thousand companies, more uh, manufacturers. Um, you know, there were, there were people who were using steam and, and, and there were people who uh, wanted to use gasoline and, you know, people weren't sure what would work best. And, you know, if you had a steam car, you know, you had to get the thing percolating and you had to, you know, heat up the boiler and you had to get it going and they were, you know, how did you get the brakes going and so forth. And, and, then, and then came along people who said, no, 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 that's just too complicated. We should use gasoline and, and people said, no, that, that won't take off. And then people, you know, started experimenting and one thing led to another and, 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 and then it, very fast it went to gasoline cars and, and, you know, the Model T and very much to, and what we know are very familiar with today. And so suddenly we were transitioning to an electric car and the next thing will be, and what is now, is the hydrogen car. And why this is important is that 30% of our transportation uh, is fossil fuel emitting and you know when we're, we're th thinking about the future we have to think, figure out how can we reduce this how can we reduce this in a meaningful way at a very at a very basic way and and that's what the public has to do because the public has to choose to use hydrogen they has to has to choose to use electric vehicle they have to choose not to use fossil fuels and and they have to want to make that choice and so by having a hydrogen festival which i hope will be the first of a number of festivals uh, we'll be able to, you know, capture the public's imagination uh, the way people did with the motor car and say, well, you know, here's another path. This is aspirational. This is something that anybody can do. And just look around the world how fast this is changing, how, you know, uh, large uh, trucking companies on the mainland now are gearing up for 
hydrogen trucks and in Japan uh, you know the, the the designer of the Prius you know is now the designer of, of, of the Mara you know they you know they, he, and, and you know they're, they're saying look this is happening we're doing this and so uh, we're gonna have uh, panels as you always have where people can experts from around the world world will come and talk about hydrogen and, and how it fits in our society and different ways that it fits, you know, whether it's the motor car or if it's in uh, marine transportation or, 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 or maybe in, in aeronautics. Uh, you know, we're we're going to have uh, talk about how this could be used on our grid to make our, 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 uh, our grid so we, we can use less fossil fuels. You know, we're going to look at all the different aspects of how this new hydrogen economy will fit into this new Hawaii economy. You know, people always say uh, that things don't change that fast, but actually they really do. You know, you know, uh, um, you know people have, say, you know, if you look at the history of Hawaii, for example, and you say, okay, well, you know, first, you know, when people came here, you know, the, the, the Hawaiians were here and they developed this tremendous uh, technology with fish ponds and all these things, amazing things that they did. And then uh, Europeans came. And then they had, you know, the whaling industry. People thought the whaling industry was going to be here for a long time. But, you know, within about 50, 75 years, it, it changed. It, it disappeared and sugar came in. And then people thought, oh, sugar will be here forever. It'll always be here. In 50 years, it was, it was gone. And now, you know, we're, we're in this very urbanized space and we're, we're uh, we're, we're, we're looking at, you know, how do we cope with all these people? How do we cope with all these cars? How, you know, how do we cope with all these fossil fuels? And you know, maybe that path is hydrogen. And, mm -hmm. you know, the Hydrogen Festival is a way to learn about this, to look at this, uh, to involve all the different aspects of our community into this new path that's rapidly coming our way. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, we're going to take a break now, gentlemen, um, Mitch and Mike. And uh, when we come back, I wonder if you could address the question of where hydrogen cars fit in a diversity of, um, of renewable vehicles and how they play with electric cars. And what, to what extent, if any, uh, are electric cars going to be on display at the Hydrogen Festival? Think about that question. We'll take one minute off. We'll be right back and then we'll return. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm Jay Fidel, and our host, Mitch Ewan, joins us from his office in uh, UH Manoa, HNEI. And we're going to talk some more with Mike Markridge, our guest today, who is from Rebuild Hawaii. And we're going to talk about the Hydrogen Festival, which is in August. And uh, Mitch, I hope that you ask Mike um, to talk about uh, the, the relationship and presence of electric cars at the festival? I'm going to ask that question. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to uh, editorialize slightly here in that basically a hydrogen car is an electric vehicle. Now, we've been trying for years to uh, get our legislation in place so that, you know, a uh, a uh, hydrogen car, which is an electric vehicle, can have the same basic advantages as a battery electric vehicle. And it looks like this year it's going to make it, and I'm sure some of that credit must go to Servco, who have probably been helping uh, brief up our legislature, le legislators on the fact that actually a hydrogen car is an electric car. And, uh, you know, the hydrogen is just a way, another way to store uh, ele electricity. 
So, Mike, um, how about um, giving us some idea of um, uh, what we can expect at the Hydro Festival? I know, I know, it's like early days, and uh, like we just had our meeting at lunchtime. But what what kind of highlights do you think that uh, we should be talking about and looking at? Well, what I want to do is I want to bring in international visionaries, leaders in hydrogen transportation, and to talk about things people are doing, how they're doing it. And I, I can't really give very many names right now because we're, this is still in the planning stage. But you know, maybe you could mention some of the people we talked about at lunch. Oh, I can. Sure, yeah. Well, we're looking at all the major hydrogen players like uh, uh, NEL Hydrogen, which used to be called Proton, uh, Amoresco, who's a local energy uh, services company, um, U.S. Hybrid, who actually um, is a fuel cell uh, developer, uh, manufacturer more than just developing. And uh, they've been in Hawaii for 23 years, and the buses that uh, I've, been, I've procured have all been converted to hydrogen by U.S. Hybrid. So we would expect them to be here, and we're going to show off the, the newest uh, fuel cell. Um, who else did we talk about? Um, um, that's all that comes to mind right now, but... Yeah, I want to put in a plug-in for you, Mike, that we are looking for uh, sponsors uh, for uh, the show. And so the long arm is going to come out to some of the major players. Servco, we'd really like Servco to be, be there and do some ride and drives with their, uh, with their like, uh, Mirai. But I don't want to take all your thunder there, Mike, so you go ahead and fill in the gaps. Okay, so because we're just getting started, we're going to be in, uh, writing letters, I can't really mention any specific names? Well, right? you could mention Stan Osterman. And I can mention HCAT. Stan, Stan be and HCAT because If, if course, Stan Osterman doesn't show up, I mean, it would be a, back, a gaping hole in the program. Be, it would be a gaping <laughs> hole. But no, no, Stan has been a, a big uh, supporter of this. And, and uh, Stan, as you know, is a visionary. And Stan has uh, made possible so many different opportunities for the use of hydrogen, and you know, and again, you know, like Mitch, he's a very visionary thinker. So you know, it's like how to use this on the military side, how to use this on the civilian side. You know, uh, how do you make this accessible to the average person? Now, like, you know, what, you know, one of the, the uh, um, people I read about was uh, Dr. Katsuhiki Hirose, who was is in charge of the Toyota hydrogen program, and he's saying that you know, they're, they're right now, you know people are, 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 are contesting, you know, are we going to have, which kind of electric vehicle are we going to have? Is it going to be the battery powered hydrogen vehicle or is it going to be, you know, uh, the fuel cell electric vehicle? You know, is it going to be, you know, battery or fuel cell? And he's saying that, well, eventually it's probably going to be the fuel cell and it's going to be the fuel cell because, you know, in Hawaii, uh, for example, you have batteries, but you have to dispose of batteries. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you have all these problems with batteries. Mm -hmm. you know, in an island, you accumulate Serious batteries. Problem, right? Yeah. That's right. So, you know, and, and with, with hydrogen, you know, the waste products are, uh, water is a waste product, right? Mm -hmm. So that's less of a problem. And, and so um, we, we hope to be able to talk about you know, the advantages, the disadvantages of, of, of the different uh, opportunities there are in electric vehicles. And also the different kinds of ways we can use hydrogen. There's gonna be a hydrogen cooking demonstration. Uh, we're gonna uh, ask um, school children uh, to do, perform doing certain things with hydrogen um, and how they maybe could, could envision hydrogen in their lives because basically we're talking about, this is gonna be their world. This is gonna be their world uh, that we're trying to free of the burden of fossil fuels. So how, how can we help them? One thing you guys might consider is uh, a program, I, I don't remember whether you were there, Mitch, you might have been, uh, that was done by the fire department uh, a year or two ago at the fire station, um, I guess it's a training facility near Pearl Harbor. And they were showing uh, what, what happened um, with the burning of hydrogen in the open air. They were showing that it was totally transparent and you had to have a certain device to tell uh, when, when it was burning. And I guess this was relevant to a, a fire that might be involving hydrogen gas, uh, and they were preparing themselves for that possibility. But it was, a, it was also an example of 
the properties of hydrogen, what it's like, how you store it, how you move it, how you, how you deal with it in general. Um, and I, it was really an eye opener for me to see it, you know, close up that way. The other thing I wanted yeah, to ask was, you, sorry, Mitch, go ahead. Yeah, that was the uh, first responders uh, training uh, we uh, put on. Um, that was several years ago now, about five or six years ago, Jay, not two years ago. Sorry, move, uh, time moves so quickly. Time moves by quickly when you're having fun. Uh, but yeah, we were able to train up 150 of our first responders here on Oahu and on the Big Island. And like you say, it was uh, really uh, also uh, an outreach uh, opportunity to, like you said, show the properties of hydrogen and the really interesting thing was that the fireman was able to put his bare hand like this uh, within three or four inches of the flame front of the hydrogen and not even get singed because hydrogen has no carbon in it so it doesn't it doesn't radiate any heat so uh, that's one of the properties of hydrogen the fact is it goes up 45 miles an hour or, or 90 or 60 feet per second Thousand and one that's already gone up sixty feet, six story building, so it just naturally wants to get away. And actually it gave our firefighters, our first responders, a lot of confidence in uh, being more comfortable with the whole idea of hydrogen and safety. And uh, that's very uh, important to any kind of a hydrogen program. Uh, I'd also like to do a quick little shout out while I have the floor here, uh, very briefly, to uh, Paul Pontio at uh, Blue Planet uh, Research over on the Big Island. He's build a little uh, walk burner that operates on hydrogen and he brings that around to various places to demonstrate the fact that this flame uh, you know doesn't radiate any heat and we hope that uh, you know it doesn't radiate heat. I mean, it's plenty hot inside it but um, there's a lot of interest in using hydrogen as a cooking fuel um, and so we hope to be able to display that over here at the hydrogen festival and uh, you know have hydro burgers and hydro hot dogs so over to you, Mike, yeah, and Jay. Well, I'd be interested in seeing an electrolyzer at your festival. Um, I, I don't know if it's uh, at, a, at a price or a scale where the average, uh, you know, homeowner or citizen could buy one, but I'd be interested in seeing one because it's, uh, it's a key to uh, how you make hydrogen. Uh, and maybe going forward, you'll have to tell me, but maybe going forward, that would be useful to, as to create the fuel in the event you need to create the fuel for your your hydrogen device, like your car, um, I know I know uh, Hank Rogers has one, um, but maybe there are others, and maybe we could see one, touch one, mm -hmm. turn one on, yeah. see how it works. That would be very useful to again appreciate the properties of hydrogen and how you create hydrogen. And finally, I wanted to ask you guys uh, about the Mirai. You know, Mitch and I have talked about the Mirai. It's a it's a very attractive car. I've seen it at the car show for a couple of years already, uh, made by Toyota. It's, uh, it's actually beautiful. Uh, you know, when some of these other uh, electric cars or hybrid cars have come out, uh, you can't say they're beautiful. I'm sorry. <laughs> but the Mirai is beautiful um, in terms of the lines of it, you know, the, the way it hangs together, and, and for that matter, the way it operates. And I, I hope you have at least one, maybe more than one there, uh, so people can see them. Also, I recall that uh, I think you guys set it up, Mitch. Um, it, it was uh, at at the uh, at the research facility you have or had at uh, the Hawaiian Electric property on Ward Avenue. You had a, a bunch of uh, hydrogen cars to actually drive. Do you remember that? Um, and could you set that up for the festival? Yeah, we uh, we supported a, a project uh, that actually. Um, uh, Hawaii Gas uh, was the main instigator behind that whole, uh, provided the leadership to get that program going. We had the 15 General Motor Equinox uh, fuel cell vehicles here in town. And that was the vehicle that uh, you and I rode around in, uh, Jay, and it had plenty of performance. I mean, you know, you can actually burn rubber in those uh, in those cars. They have such good torque and, and, and pickup. So, yeah. Um, those cars, unfortunately, have been returned to GM. I mean, they were experimental, and uh, they've, they've probably taken them all apart to analyze, you know, how well they uh, they worked. Um, but there's always a chance to get other makers' cars out here as well if we give them enough lead time to ship their vehicles out. Um, yeah, Hickam has a, a bus that may, may be available, uh, you know, that is certainly... Uh, 
uh, maybe a, uh, as a static uh, uh, display. Uh, I have a bus that will be eventually on the Big Island. I'm not sure that I can ship it back to Honolulu and then back to the Big Island. Uh, but we can certainly uh, have a video of all that kind of stuff and, and demonstrate it to uh, show it to people. Yeah, that's a so, great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other, yeah, the other thing want... I wanted to ask before we before we close uh, to see if you guys could help us with this. So right now, uh, in the mind of the public, you know, the electric car per se, rather than the hydrogen car, has been, you know, has been talked about and, and advertised and what have you. And there are what seventy five hundred of them running around. Um, so um, the in many ways, the hydrogen car is more attractive. And I wonder if one or both of you could just answer this question for me. Um, how do I make my mind up? Assuming they're both on the market, assuming Mirai takes off, uh, what considerations uh, would I entertain to make my choice between an electric car and a hydrogen car? Well, I think one of the things with a hydrogen car is that you can just, you know, it takes three minutes to refuel it, right? I mean, just, isn't that right, Mitch, uh, five to ten minutes? Yeah. You know, you yeah, just, the, actually, the whole, the whole objective of a car company is just to make the experience of uh, owning a uh, hydrogen car the same as your existing car, so you don't have to change anything in the way you do business. So electric cars, you still have to plug them in, you know, unplug them, coil the cable, and put it up. I know that sounds like totally insignificant, but here, uh, you know, we, um, you know, the general public, I mean, they just don't want, quote, any kind of a hassle factor involved. Yeah, true, so true. it's like the more you can make it exactly what they're used to, the better it is. And, uh, you know, the more accepting they may be of this technology, there's certainly a place for a, a straight battery electric uh, vehicle. I'm not knocking them at all. In fact, you know, in the uh, hydrogen vehicle, we have batteries. Like, you know, for it to uh, absorb a regenerator braking, you know, when you brake, instead of using your brakes, you use the generator, you use the motor as a generator. And so you can recover uh, quite a lot of that energy, just like you do in a battery electric uh, vehicle now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, you know, it'll come down to price and, and, and uh, how easy is it to get fueled and uh, all these other kinds of considerations. Um, certainly a guy who has a battery electric uh, vehicle and has great rooftop solar that he can charge at his house. Well, you know, there's a certain, there's a certain uh, advantage uh, in being able to charge your own car up with your rooftop solar and you don't have to pay anything extra. So that's, that's a good thing and that's, that's tough to overcome. So one of the interesting things, what are you going to say something? Uh, that, was, that was brought up uh, at lunch was, uh, so, uh, Batteries make use of cobalt. Cobalt comes from, uh, it's very expensive, comes from the Congo. There's lots of, lots of politics with cobalt. Subject to geopolitics. Yeah, sure. That's right. So, so it's, it's expensive and, and, you know, and then just as we talked about disposals and issue, but, you know, uh, uh, hydrogen cars use lithium and uh, lithium comes, yeah. you can get from seawater. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that we've always wanted to do was, uh, was to try to make electricity, you know, from the ocean, you know, uh, and one of the byproducts of that would be lithium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, lithium provides all kinds of opportunities. Let and, me uh, let me ask one more question. It's yeah, related yeah. Um, before we close, and that it's about buses. You know, we we know, for example, that the Department of Transportation Services in Hawaii in Honolulu yeah. is uh, testing these uh, two section buses, uh, they're electric buses, yeah. and they cost three quarters of a million dollars a piece, you know. And they, they may have to make it, they will have to make a choice at the end of the test period as to what they do, whether they actually buy these buses and, and deploy them or not. Um, but it seems to me, not only through you, Mitch, but through uh, Stan Osserman, that, that hydrogen is a better bet for buses. Hydrogen's been used, hydrogen buses have been used uh, on the military bases and in, in uh, various places in the state for the past few years, and they work well. And my sense of it, and I'd like you to agree or disagree, I think I know your answer, um, seems to me that hydrogen is a better fit for buses in general. And that's where we should, that's one place anyway, maybe the, the primary place 
that we should focus our efforts on deploying hydrogen um, for transportation. Thoughts, answers, remarks, agreements, disagreements? Why? Uh, I'll let Mitch address that. He's, he's the expert yeah. on buses. I totally agree with that. I mean, the, the, the uh, major barrier to speed bump we have now is hydrogen infrastructure, like where do I fuel? And with a bus, first of all, you're looking at fueling a fleet, so you only have to build like one hydrogen station for a bus fleet. Uh, of course, it's going to be a big one. Um, in California, they allow early adopters of light duty vehicles like the Mirai to, they, they put a, a dispenser outside the gate, so it allows the early adopters uh, to uh, come in and fuel their vehicles and then set up a program to do that. Um, also, you know, at this stage of the game, we rely on government money and public funding from the taxpayers. And by operating a fleet of buses, in addition to all the other advantages, it allows the general public to actually experience uh, the bus. A anybody can get on the hydrogen bus and experience uh, what it's like. And uh, at the same time, you're doing public outreach, and they're going to say, wow, this is really quiet, and what happened to all those uh, diesel fumes that I don't have to breathe? And the other one thing I want to get plugged in here is that we fitted out our bus for the Big Island uh, County bus with an export power unit. Basically, we can export 110, 220 volt uh, AC power for when you have a civil defense emergency, like a tsunami or a hurricane knocks down all your power. You can use your bus and as a, a mobile uh, um, generator to go around and plug in uh, critical uh, any critical load that you have that you want to keep powered up. And so if you have a whole fleet of buses, like for example, let's just assume uh, the county, city and county of Honolulu like goes 100% uh, hydrogen uh, fuel cell buses, you have like 565 mobile uh, power packs that can be dispensed or dispersed anywhere to provide uh, you know, power, and then when you want to, uh, you know, they provide about 30 hours of power at full power, and then when you want to recharge it, all you do is you bring it back to the station, and it takes like 15 to 20 minutes to refill it with hydrogen, and you're good for another 30 hours or more. So that's something that we totally have not uh, looked at closely, but the bus on the big island that we're just getting ready to deploy now will be a beautiful example uh, and a demonstration of that capability, and will help justify that cost differential between the existing diesel buses and an electric bus or a hydrogen bus, um, and uh, perhaps from a different budget to offset the cost mm -hmm. of your bus, so you get down to parity, mm -hmm. and you can make the business case and the uh, value proposition of why should I be buying these buses. So those are some of the thoughts I have on mm -hmm. buses. I'm a big fan of buses. I bet yeah. you didn't know that. Yeah. Mike, you wanted to add something well, to that? No, it's just that, you know, what, what Mitch is doing is so important because, you know, the, the longest journey begins with a single step. And, and so this is the way, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're stepping away from fossil fuels. We're stepping forward in another direction. And, and, and so I, I just think when we, we're talking about, you know, on the one hand, which is more efficient, the diesel powered or the hydrogen. We're, we're, the other thing is, well, we want our future. We want a future for young people. We want a future for the world. And so what is, what is the price you put on that future? The longest journey begins with clean energy. That's the point. Thank you, Mike Markridge. Thank you, Mitch Ewan. Great to have Welcome. you. Great to have this discussion. Good luck on the festival. I hope we hear more about it from you between then and now. Great. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, Mitch. Aloha. <laughs>